All right, thank you, Michael. Yeah, it seems to be working. Tonight's study is a, a very short study called Giants, and it's looking at something we've discussed in a room previously, uh, the men of renown. So I think all of this would be related. And the target verse, Genesis 6, verse 4, and let's look at giants. Giants, I think you'll see. And the reason I was uh, interested in looking at this area, again, because I remember uh, Family Radio used to look at the this verse. Let me post it. And would tell you that this is talking about the, the famous uh, people of the world, the ball players, the musicians, and so on. So in verse 4, Genesis 6, there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. So who are the men of renown? So I think in this context we'll see that the men of renown would also be the giants, correct? So spiritually, I think this is looking at the, the church reproducing, uh, bearing children in a time when Antichrist are ruling. And so they become the giants, the giants in the land, the men of renown, the mighty men. In verse 5, and God saw, and in this context, God is going to destroy the earth. God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And then in verse 7, And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created. Now keep in mind that historically we're looking at the, the death of the world, planet earth, but spiritually when we try to find a substance uh, we see that Ultimately, it is pointing spiritually to the death of the church. Not the end of this literal world, but rather the how God is dealing with Babylon. So I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping things. And in Numbers 13, 33, we read about the giants of the sons of Anak. And there again... Uh, you know, the same would be in view, uh, which come of the giants. And we were in our sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. So they are ruling the giants. There were giants in the earth in those days. And the days there, the days leading up to the flood, where God sees the wickedness of man, just like he sees today, the wickedness of the body of Christ, the church. In Deuteronomy 3, verse 13, we read about Bashan, which was called the land of giants. The land of giants. You know, there are not too many verses looking at the word giants in the Bible. And so we have to try and establish a bridge because it doesn't have to be just the word giant. We can look at synonyms for the word giant and given the proper context, that too would also point to the church, I believe. Second Samuel chapter 21 and verse 20. And there was said yet a battle in Gath. The word Gath uh, means wine press, which reminds me of the wine press that we read about in the book of Revelation. Uh, the wine press was trodden underfoot and that again, I think, is pointing to the church. It's pointing to Babylon. And there was a man of great stature. So he is also a giant. And therefore the stature would be relating to the giants and ultimately to the ones ruling in the body of Christ in tribulation. So he also was born to the giants. Remember Genesis 6? Giants were born unto them. 
And in uh, 1 Samuel 17, verse 4, we read about Goliath. And Goliath here would be a type, I believe, of Satan, uh, who is the church, Babylon, and tribulation, Antichrist ruling. And he was an adversary to David. Remember, David defeated Goliath. There went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath. So here's a tie in there again. Whose height was six cubits and a span. And verse 20, Deuteronomy 2. Here they are called uh, Zem, Zemzumims, which means plotters. And spiritually, I think God is looking at Babylon. So that also was accounted of, accounted a land of giants. Giants dwelt therein in old time. The Amorites called them Zemzumims. We also read in Deuteronomy 2, verse 11. And here they're called terrors, or emims, which also were accounted giants as the Anakims, but the Moabites called them emims, or emims. And the word terror is not uh, unusual in the Bible. We see, for example, in Ezekiel 32, in verse 26, God speaks of Babylon being a terror. Oh, hold on, that verse didn't post. Let me try it again. Ezekiel chapter 26, I'm sorry, 32, verse 26. There is Meshach, Tubal, and all her multitude, her graves around about him, all of them uncircumcised, slain by the sword, though they cause their terror. You see that? They cause their terror in the land of the living. Okay, any questions? Any questions so far? Looking at the word giant, trying to determine or look at how God is using that in the Bible and how ultimately it would be relating to the church. In Job 16, verse 14, He breaketh me with breach upon breach. He runneth upon me like a giant. So now, well, the giants of Gad, that was Goliath. That's the enemy. So can you see again the principle that God uses the enemy to come against the church? He used Goliath to come against David, a type of Christ. So he uses Babylon to come against Babylon. Now the believers, they had to endure that, so they were subject to it. Judgment beginning at the house of God. So he runneth upon me like a giant. Well, God is the giant. Christ is a giant. But given the context in tribulation, it is Antichrist that are ruling. First Chronicles 20, verse 8. These were born unto the giant in Gath, and they fell by the hand of David. So there, David again, type of Christ. Uh, he defeated Goliath. He defeated the giant. So Christ also defeats the giant. But Christ accomplishes this by allowing the giant to come against the giant. Can you see that? When we search the rest of the Bible, it is a church against the church. So the, the king of Babylon coming against Babylon, coming against the church. In Numbers 13, verse 32, look at the latter part. Is a land that eateth up inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of a great stature, the giants. And notice what they do. They eat up the inhabitants thereof. So that would seem to relate to the, the church ruling, Antichrist ruling in judgment and tribulation. 1 Samuel 16, verse 7. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature. Because I have refused him, for the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. So, the height of his stature, if you're looking at it, uh, looking at the individual in terms of uh, how well they are and how big they are, 
And that certainly happens to be the case. The strong man in judgment, Satan coming against the church. So can you see how that would tie in? Isaiah chapter 10, verse 33. Behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts shall... Hold on, let me post it. Shall lop the bow with terror and the high ones of stature. That's the giants. The high ones of stature and the haughty shall be humbled. Isaiah 45, verse 14. I'm not sure if that verse opposed. It's a long verse. Let me try. Okay, thus saith the Lord, the labor of Egypt and merchandise of Ethiopia and the Sabaeans. And the Sabaeans are the drunkards. Again, reminds us of the church. Be not be, be not drunken with wine. So the idea of being drunk with wine, it is uh, the church going apostate. So now the Sabaeans, men of stature. The church, men of stature. Babylon, men of stature, the giants. Ezekiel 19, verse 11. And she had... It's talking about Babylon in the context. She had strong rods for the scepter of them that bear rule and her stature was exalted among the thick branches. Her stature was exalted, uh, which brings us to the next verse, Isaiah 14, verse 13. See if you can see a relationship there. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. So that's the desire of Antichrist. He wants to be like God and comes through the church. It goes into the church. Uh, the church then becomes Babylon. Daniel 8 verse 24. Here's another tie-in. And his power shall be mighty. But not by his own power, and he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper in practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. Okay. Any questions so far? A couple of verses to go in this category, and then we'll look at the days of Noah. Matthew 12, 29. Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house? These are the giants that I'm proposing. There were giants in the earth in those days. And today, certainly, uh, beginning with the Great Tribulation, there were giants. These are the false prophets that are coming against the body. So how can one enter into a strong man's house except he first bind the strong man? So Christ had to bind Satan. And I know we've been taught, uh, I've been taught that this happened at the cross. Well, in principle, that might be the case, but... Uh, Satan really was bound when Christ was revealed to judge the church. That makes sense? And I think we read about that in Revelation 20. Uh, an angel came in, uh, coming down with a great chain in his hand, and he bound the devil, that old Satan, which is... Uh, let's see, what verse was that? And bound him a thousand years. Now that, I think, is not talking about the cross. Revelation 20, verse 2. And laid hold on a dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. And this binding, I propose, we, we read about this in the book of Revelation. It is the separation of wheat and tares. Thus he was bound so that he would no longer deceive the nation. Deception has everything to do with the tribulation. Okay, um, and then Luke chapter 11, verse 22, when a strong man, a stronger man, and that's Christ, when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armor, wherein he trusted and divideth his spoil. So Christ is a strong man, stronger than Satan, but he uses Satan, he uses the giants to come against the church. 1 Corinthians 10.22 Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? 
Are we stronger than he? Are we giants in our own eyes? Are we the men of renown? Okay, any questions there? Any questions? Now, the context of Genesis 6 in verse 4, I mentioned before, it is the day of the Lord, judgment day. So let's look at that verse again and then try to pick up some additional information. So there were giants in the earth. The earth is parabolic for the church. God is speaking in parables. Now historically, you know, these are historical parables. They literally happen, but we have to look at what they were pointing to spiritually. Christ within us. Hi, welcome back. So they, the giants in the earth, historically, uh, that did happen, but it is pointing spiritually to the giants that are ruling in the church in the last days, in the day of judgment. Now we read also in uh, Matthew 24, verse 37, so it will establish the context. But as the days of Noah so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Well, what happened in the days of Noah? Well, we just read earlier that there were giants in the earth in those days. And then I posted a few verses uh, after that, showing the uh, looking at the context. For example, in verse 5, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created. So now that's judgment coming on the days or the people in the days of Noah. And now God is contrasting that with the coming of the Son of Man. And we read in verse 38, Matthew 24, For as in the days that were before the flood... They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. Now, I'm not going to go into uh, you know any details here. But again, keep in mind that God is speaking in parables. And so eating and drinking, uh, activities of the gospel. In this context, these would be the locusts, the false prophets that are coming in the name of Christ. Uh, they are giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And knew not verse 39 until the flood came and took them all away now when we study the bible if we search by god's grace eric hi welcome back uh finishing up the study here on the giants in matthew 24 verse 39 and knew not until the flood came and took them all away so shall also the coming of the son of man be now we, we we search the Bible. The flood, I mentioned although it happened, yeah, it happened historically, but it was spiritually pointing to the flood, that is the, uh, the flood of ungodly men. The wicked in the earth, God saw that the earth was wicked. Every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil. And that again, I believe, is pointing to the apostasy of the church. The giants, yeah, the Antichrist, uh, the strong man, the mighty man, the men of renown. And now the flood here, if you look at Revelation 12, 15, and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood. Now, didn't God say that he would no longer destroy the world with a flood? Maybe we'll, we'll get into that. Uh, but just, you know, keep that in mind as we look at these verses. Because in the Old Testament, God did mention after the flood that he would no longer destroy the world with a flood. Well, why is he talking about a flood here in the context of judgment? Nimrod and Lamech. Yeah. Uh, so in, what verse is that? Don't I just... Oh yeah, so he cast out water. I'm, I'm missing part of that verse. Uh, hold on one second. 
Let me post Revelation 12, verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth, there it is, water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. What flood is that? What flood is that? It would have to be the flood of ungodly men, right? That would have to be Babylon. But it, it's not water. It's not, yeah, the people. It's not the water that destroyed the earth, but that, that water was pointing to the, the people. That, it was pointing to Babylon, the flood of ungodly men. And then we read in Zephaniah 1, uh, verse 14, about the mighty man. The great day of the Lord is near, it is near, and hasteth greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man, shall cry there bitterly. The mighty man, I think there, is pointing to Babylon. Um, it is the, the men of renown, the giants. And in the day of judgment, in the day of the Lord, God gives Babylon over to Babylon. So there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay, now... Let me uh, let me post. I mentioned this was a very short study, uh, so like a review, looking at the men of renown from a different perspective, looking at the giants in the earth, the giants of Gath. You know, I mentioned earlier that Goliath was a giant. He typified the church coming against David, Christ. Uh, now, the Bible appears to be associating giants with Antichrist ruling in tribulation and judgment. Christ is a giant and a strong man. However, in judgment, he uses Babylon, that's the giants, to come against the church. And this was typified by the giants who were ruling in the days of the flood. Okay, any questions? Margaret, is Margaret here? That must be Christ within us. Welcome, Margaret. All right, so any questions? Any questions? Um, let, me, let me turn off the recorder. Okay, thank you, Michael. Let me turn off the recorder, and I want to come back to the question about the flood. Why is it that God mentioned that he would no longer destroy the world with a flood? Hold on one second.